They can come to this country and get the American dream. The American dream was 90 to 95 percent black labor and 5 percent land. Land had no value unless you had a slave on it. That's where the value came from. Land was free. Every white person that came to America could immediately go out and pick up land free. He could get into the land rush and, could, and go drive a stake in the ground on in any new openly territorial lands and he could own that land as far as the eye can see. Every white person could pick up 700, I mean 640 acres of land for every slave he owned. If I, for on the Homesteading Act, he can go out and pick up, and for every slave he got free land. You see, and as a matter of fact, in the, after the Oklahoma Territory opened up in the late, in the late 1800s, about, 18, about 1870s, they opened up the Oklahoma Territory, Whites rushed into the country from Europe, and they traveled out west, along with Asians and everybody else. Asians came here looking for gold on that land. That's how they came to America. They came to California looking for gold. Everybody was coming to America looking for the American dream to get something free, unearned benefits. And then in the Oklahoma land rush, whites picked up. In 24 hours, in one day, they picked up over 2 million acres of free land. But, when they, but in the final analysis in 1860, when black folk got out of slavery with nothing, after, uh, after 350 years of slavery, they, and, and, the, and the radical Republicans said, you should be minimally entitled to something to counter the Dred Scott decision in 1857, which says you have no rights. The radical Republicans in 1863 said they mu you must minimally give black folk something. That unless black folk get minimum subsidies, there's only two things they can be. They're gonna be slaves or they're gonna be free. They must minimally have 40 acres of mule and $100. 40 acres of mule and $100 for every black slave. That was his reward for 350 years of free labor. And guess what happened? They killed him. You couldn't even get 40 acres of free land. Everybody else was picking up millions of acres of free land. And all that free land multiplied and doubled every 20 years in value. That's why when you go out west, you see all those free acres, ranches, 30 or 40,000 acre ranches and, 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 uh, and homesteads and black folk have nothing because you see, you never got your 40 acres in a mule. So back in 1860, my point then, I'm trying to show you is this. In 1860, the same thing that happened to you when you came out of slavery happened again in 1960. The same thing. When you came out of slavery, you got nothing. Nobody went back and, and dealt with the real problem with black America. You came out with nothing. Rather than saying, let's go back and, and reconstruct, let's correct what slavery did. Slavery happened to you, not by accident, but on purpose. The purpose of slavery was to maldistribute almost 100% of all this nation's wealth, power, resource, businesses, businesses, and controls of all levels of government into the hands of the dominant white society. That was the purpose of slavery. It had a purpose. When did you correct it? Nobody corrected it. You came out of slavery and went right into what we call semi-slavery, yeah. called Jim Crow segregation. Yeah. Nobody corrected anything. They just said you're free, quasi-free. And that's it. Now go compete on your own. So those black folk got out of slavery. And, uh, and in the process of getting out of slavery, the radical Republicans said, well, if you should minimally give them 40 acres of mule and hundred dollars, and more importantly, you should put them into a protected class. Black folk must be in a protected class. You cannot enslave people for, for 350 years and just turn them loose. They got to be protected. They can't defend themselves. They can't compete. Do something for them. Put them in a, put them in a protected class. And those radical Republicans, like, like Congressman Benjamin, Congressman Sumner, and Thaddeus Stevens, they set up what's called a, a, the Freedmen Bureau. The Freedmen Bureau was set up to give black folks something. In addition, they set up the Freedmen Banks in there. And, in that, and they put you into a protected class, just like they put American Indians in the protected class. And see, the Indians are still in the protected class. That's how you have a National Indian Bureau, Federal Indian Bureau. 
But as soon as they put black folk into a protected class, guess what happened? The radical whites in the country says we, can't, we, we need these black folk. We're not gonna let them get away from us. They can't stay in a protected class and they're not gonna get that land, the free land. What we're gonna do now is to broaden the, 15th, the 13th Amendment, the 14th Amendment, and say it applies to everybody. And the Supreme, United States Supreme Court went along with it to make sure that the status quo maintained the same, that black folk never got anything. The United States Supreme Court only has authority to do three things. Only three things. I have not heard not one single black leader in all my life make an issue of it. The United States Supreme Court has authority to do three things. One, to intervene with, in, in an issue in the lower court. Two, in an ambassadorial appointment. Or three, in the firing of a federal employee who fails to carry out his responsibility. That's the only three things they can get engaged in. They have no rights over the United States Congress to change anything that Congress put into effect. Now, wh wh how did they get away with it? Because when the Congress was the United States Supreme Court was established in the 1790s, in 1803, in what they call the Marbury Madison decision, a case came up, and the, and the Supreme Court said, we're going to jump into this and make a decision. And they made a decision. Nobody protested in 1803, and they got away with it. But, there, but nothing else happened between 1803 and 1857, because, they, because the Supreme Court wasn't engaged in these issues. Here comes 1857 with, with Dred Scott. And then the Supreme Court jumped in and says, a black man has no rights. And then they started using that, that as, a, as a skate as a, as a, and to, for, to make sure that no blacks can escape. They get no non-escape clause, that you have no rights. And that's one of the first things that the, that the radical Republicans did in 1863, was they say, we're gonna reverse that. And they, got, and they started working on what's called the Civil Rights Law of 1865 then. Then here comes Andrew Johnson, he vetoed it. But then, then they passed it again in 1866. And again, this, uh, Andrew Johnson vetoed it. He replaced Lincoln after he got assassinated. But in, by 1866, the United States Congress says, we're going to now rewrite the 1866 Civil Rights Law that is particularly for black folk. Those laws were, Civil Rights Laws were written for black folk to make sure that they could never be uh, uh, subordinated, displaced, subord and, and, and discriminated, racist, enslaved again or forever. That's what those civil rights laws are for, giving them rights to overcome the 1857 civil rights law. And guess what? They then took it and said, we're going to make sure you can't, can't overrule it. We're going to make it the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. That's where, the, that's where the 14th Amendment came from. It says that no white person has the rights to use and overrule the 14th Amendment and the civil rights laws. Then by 1873, a group of whites down in, down in New Orleans said, we're going to try to use that 14th Amendment uh, that was written for black folk. And it, it was called the Slaughterhouse Case in 1873. They wanted to use it and said, we can have the same rights that black folk should have. And they went to the courts. And guess what? The courts overruled them in the Slaughterhouse Case said, the Slaughterhouse Case was written, and the 14th Amendment was written strictly for black folk. I don't hear any blacks say it, telling, telling people around the country, you, can't, you, you whites cannot use the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment said pretty clearly that it's put into effect to keep white folks from denying rights and privileges that black folk are entitled to. How are you going to come in and you're going to use it to stop black folk and charge reverse discrimination when black folks use it? That's what they're saying against you. And now all these, now according to Donald Trump, Donald Trump's going to bring it out as an issue now. Nobody's discussed it now in, in 50 something, 150 years. It's going to come out now by Donald Trump that the 14th Amendment was written for black folk. And all these Hispanics and other illegals coming to the country claim they got birth rights to be get entitlements some close to black folk. It's gonna, you're going to find out through Donald Trump and the rest of them, they're not entitled to those benefits. And all those babies they call to bring in, having those anchor babies, they can say that the, the law says that, that, that they don't have those rights to drop anchor babies in this country. That the, 18th, that the 14th Amendment was strictly for black folk. And Donald Trump was saying, I'm going to bust all of you out back to Mexico and out of this country because you're not entitled to the 14th Amendment because it's written for black folk. But up this time, everybody's kept that concealed that was for black folk. Am I talking too fast and over you all's head? Let me know, okay? And I, and I don't want to bore you all on some of this stuff. I want to give you a lot of details, okay? And that's what Donald Trump is up to. 
He's going he's gonna to go back and, and, and ex pull the sheet and the cover off of the 14th Amendment that was written for black folks. <laughs>